In early December 1952, a severe air pollution event occurred in London, known as the Great Smog of London. Smog was nothing new in the big city, but it quickly thickened into a poisonous stew unlike anything the city had ever experienced. The smoke was so dense that residents in some sections of the city were unable to see their feet as they walked. For five days, the Great Smog paralyzed London and crippled all transportation, except for the London Underground train system. Government medical reports in the week following the event estimated that up to 4,000 people had died as a direct result of the smog, and 100,000 more were made ill by the smog's effect on the human respiratory tract. More recent research suggests that the total number of fatalities may have been much greater, with estimates of between 10,000 and 12,000 deaths. So this horror story leads us to today's topic, air pollution, the invisible or not so invisible killer. Okay, so what causes air pollution? Although a number of physical activities like volcanoes and fires may release different pollutants in the environment, human activities are the major cause of environmental air pollution. By definition, an air pollutant is any substance which may harm humans, animals, vegetation or material. An air pollutant may lead to an increase in mortality or serious illnesses. The determination of whether or not a substance poses a health risk to humans is based on clinical, epidemiological and or animal studies which demonstrate that exposure to a substance is associated with health effects. Variant air pollutants have been reported, differing in their chemical composition, reaction properties, emission, persistence in the environment, ability to be transported in long or short distances and their eventual impacts on humans. However, they share some similarities and they can be grouped to four categories. The first one is gaseous pollutants, like SO2. The second one, persistent organic pollutants, like dioxins. The third, heavy metals, for example mercury. And the fourth is particulate matter. Humans enter in contact with different air pollutants primarily via inhalation and ingestion, while dermal contact represents a minor route of exposure. Air pollution contributes to the contamination of food and water, which makes ingestion in several cases the major route of a pollutant intake. A constant finding is that air pollutants contribute to increased mortality and hospital admissions. The different composition of air pollutants, the dose and time of exposure, and the fact that humans are usually exposed to pollutant mixtures than to single substances can lead to diverse impacts on human health. The effects can range from nausea and difficulty in breathing to cancer. Air pollution has both acute and chronic effects on human health, affecting a number of systems and organs, some of which are, for example, the respiratory system. Breathing in pollutants can irritate your airways and may cause shortness of breath, coughing, wheezing, asthma episodes and chest pain. Exposure to air pollution may even put you at risk for lung cancer. Air pollution can affect your cardiovascular system. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin, modifying its conformation and reduces its capacity to transfer oxygen, which leads to many health problems. It can also have an impact on the nervous system. It is mainly affected by heavy metals and dioxins. Neurotoxicity with symptoms such as memory problems, sleep disorders, anger, fatigue and others have been observed after arsenic, lead and mercury exposure. Something which is really worth discussing is the exposure to air pollution during pregnancy. Maternal exposure to heavy metals and especially to lead increases the risk of spontaneous abortion and reduced fetal growth. There are also evidences suggesting that parental lead exposure is responsible for congenital malformations. Dioxins were found to be transferred from the mother to the fetus via the placenta. They act as endocrine disruptors and affect growth and development of the central nervous system. All that is just a tiny portion of the potential effect that air pollution could have on humans' health. That is why we should all take part in preventing air pollution. But what can you do to do so? First, try to conserve energy, at home, at work, everywhere. Also, use public transportation, bike or walk whenever possible. Don't forget to keep your car in good repair, fix the exhaust and oxygen sensor problems as soon as possible. And last but not least, 
plant and care for the trees. All that may sound like baby steps to you, but it will definitely have an impact on the environment. In conclusion, my advice for you is, try to live a nature-friendly life, use your car less, walk more and care about the nature. If this video was meaningful for you, you can like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.